I don't for for him for, for the person that answered the question. I don't know because I don't know. Like, there's no way to tell because we don't know your business, man. Don't know how many people you market yourself to. Don't matter yeah, how many companies true. you're working with. There's so many variables involved in being successful in this business that we just on the surface of that question, we just don't know. I mean, you know, I did really well last year, really, really well. And a lot of people didn't. So do I think that my year next year is going to be better? This year is going to be better than my year last year. Like, I hope so, but I don't know if it will be the, no way to know. the point I'm, the point I'm making is that, listen, you're always going to have people that are going to say that they had a slow year. There, there's going to be a large – there's always going to be that percentage of people that did not have a good year. And the reason why there's such a percentage of people that didn't have a good year is because they're not doing anything to make sure that they are going to have a good year. They're with one company. They're with maybe two companies. They're only doing cat with those companies. They're only doing cat state farm with those companies. Meanwhile, there might be other people out there that are working with – that, that routinely market themselves to 50, 60 different companies that are doing CAD or just doing daily claims. And, and, and with all that being – with that said, I'm going to – I have a couple lists of questions here. And I know Matt Bluss asked if you can make uh, six figures on a CAT uh, without CAT. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bunch him in on this. You can absolutely make six figures without a CAT. I've made six figures without a CAT for years now. My whole thing is that you should be striving to be able to do that without the cat. The cat, to, I, I think of it like playoffs. I think of it like the like like playoffs in the regular season. And th this is what I thought when Irma hit because, like Matt, um, I think like Matt, I didn't do hurricanes. I got started in this business uh, early on yeah. when Sandy hit New Jersey and New York, so I got I got a crack because of that. But after that. It, I, I went a very long time not doing any cat claims at all. So I thought – I kind of considered me doing daily claims as like the regular season. That's like a regular season game. You know, we just got to get through them. And then Harvey hit. And when, when Harvey hit, I was like – it came at a point where Adjuster University was new and I was, I was dumping in all of my money there. And then Hurricane Harvey hit and I said, shoot, I should get out there. I should get some stuff. I should get some stuff um, documented here. Let me see if I can fix. I'm, I'm getting some feedback here. Um, Is that you? Not sure if it's. Oh yeah, it was. All right. Is that better? Um, no worries. I was getting. I, <laughs> I went out. I, I went out to Texas for Harvey. Right. I did that, and I was like, shoot. You know, I, I, I'm sure I could get. I think it's coming back here. I went out to Harvey, and my idea was, shoot, man, I've learned how to close you know, 10 claims a day, all different types of perils, some big, some small. Yep. Let me get, cause at that point I was just dying. I was dying for a cat. Like you mean to tell me I could go out to a site, right? And I'm going to only inspect one peril and just write roof replacements. Yeah. I'll do 50 of them in a day. Just bring them on. So I went out to Harvey and it was definitely not that you were. I, I was in South Texas where it was just complete devastation, where it was not just a roof replacement. It was I was down there doing flood claims. It was a freaking disaster. Or I was working in Houston where they had no wind. They just had water and flood where I'm just the grim reaper. Like we talk about doing the denials. I'm just a grim reaper out there just denying claims left and right. But then Irma hit. Then when Irma hit, I jumped over there to Florida. Then we're just doing roof replacements on crazy ass fee schedules. That to me, then yeah, that's right. when I thought thought of it like <laughs> this is the playoffs. Like I, I worked, you know, I was in all regular season, and now here I am in the playoffs. And this is when I have to take all of my skill and really apply it. And at, at Irma, I was doing like I was doing ten to fifteen thousand dollars a day somewhere in that. It was it was freaking insane. And I did really well doing that. But the reason why I did well doing that is because I've done so well doing daily claims before that. And just to now dial it back to the question, I don't – all of that, all of those stories there, doing so well doing daily claims and then doing really well doing cat claims, none of that would have ever been possible if I didn't already understand the importance of marketing myself and making sure 
that as many companies as possible knew exactly who I was. If I can get them to have, if I can get it so that I have a working history with them, that's even better. But at least get them to know exactly who I am. I know in Florida during Irma, I went down for Irma with, and I and I and I handled claims with a couple uh, with uh, uh, I think two companies at first, right? Then one company quickly died off. Then I wanted to bring in another one on. I think I brought in. Um, Second company that I brought on was One Call Claims. I think they're based in Florida. Never worked with them before, but I've been giving oh, yeah. my name. I've been giving them my name for a long time. So they brought me on. They're already used to seeing my name pop up. Why not let it pop up somewhere else? I now? was doing file so reviews for them. them. I probably looked at some of your files. Right. Yeah, you could have. So I did that. And then shortly after that, I was like, I got I got some more. I got some more space. So I brought on, and that was the first time I worked with uh, IMS claim service. I brought them on too. And what, what's great about that is IMS, since ever since Irma had a good relationship with them, our, IMS has contributed to my yearly income through uh, Hurricane Michael that happened a year later. And most recently, because they don't really have much business in New Jersey, but they have business in more New England. And this last winter, I think it was in our, our uh, I think in October, they had a storm up in Massachusetts, non-licensing state. And it, it generated some claims in, you know, Connecticut and Rhode Island licensing states, but I can get licenses there because I already had that great relationship in place. I was like, if you got claims, I'll go up there. It's a, it's a three, four hour drive, but I'll go up there and I'll handle those claims. And they started giving me these claims because I already had such a relationship with them. That relationship came as a result of marketing myself to them. And, and, and the, that part, the marketing part, getting your name out there, pushing it in front of these companies like, hey, hey. You know, my my name is Steve. My name is Matt. Hey, look at me. Look at me. I can help you. I know how to help you. Doing that, that's what keeps your year, keeps you from being the type of person that's going to ask if the next year is going to be better than the last. Nobody, nobody knows that except you. Nobody knows the answer to that question. And so you got to market yourself. Um, and I'll, I'll throw in a plug. I'll throw in a plug right there. Do um, it. We just. We just put out um, I'm a licensed adjuster now what dot com and that uh, web address will bring you to now our I webinar. Like it. Yeah, it'll bring you to um, the webinar that I host of how to be a more effective and efficient marketer and salesperson in independent adjusting because that is the biggest part of it. If you just send if you send a company your resume, one company, you know, five companies, your resume and you're just sitting there waiting or maybe you went on their website and you put in you got on their roster and you're not and you think your job's done there you're gonna wonder if next year is gonna be better than this year but honestly unless something big happen, happens it's probably not gonna be because you're not putting the work in that other people are <laughs>